Hi, this is Darren Lyle. I think it's time to try and get Captain Quark's logo on his chest here. If I select the character and tab into edit mode and select all the polygons, we can see the UV map here. Now it looks to me like this is the UV map of the tunic. And what I'd like to do is just make sure which is the front and which is the back of the character. So I'm gonna scroll over here and turn this little guy right here. I'm going to turn that on. And if I select a face now on the character, I can see that selected there. So now I know that this is the front of the character. All right, so I'll just turn this off now. So now I know that this part right here is the front of the character. That's going to be helpful. So I'm going to take this UV map here and export it to Photoshop and then lay the logo down on the UV map there in Photoshop. So to do that, I'm just going to select everything here, and I'm going to come back over to the UVs menu and go up to Export UV Layout. Now this is going to be an animated character, so I'm not planning on taking this into a game engine. So the limitations of poly count and texture size really don't apply to this. So I'm actually going to take the size of this up pretty high. I'm going to take it up to 4K, 4096 by 4096. And that will just ensure that if I'm rendering out at, say, HD resolution 1920 by 1080, it'll just ensure that the texture won't get pixelated or blurry if there's a close-up of the character. So I'll call this uh, Captain Quark, maybe UVs, and save it out. Now let's open it up in Photoshop. All right, here in Photoshop, we can see the UV islands here. If we zoom in, you can see the grid. So what we need to do is put our logo right here on the chest of the character. So I've got a logo here. I'm going to press Control A and Control C to select everything and then copy it. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. And it's pretty small. I probably need to go back and rework this so it's a little bit bigger. But for now, let's go ahead and work with this. I'm going to scale this up just a bit and put it right about there. That looks like where it might go on the character. So the way to test this is just to take this image back into Blender. So I'm going to turn off the UV islands right here. And I'll save this out as an image file. And there it is. So I'll export that. I'll just call this Captain Quark logo for now. And let's go take it into Blender. So here in Blender, we need to bring this into the material with the green, right? We need to put it over the green material. But if we just brought it directly into this diffuse shader, it would overlay or block out the green color. So we need a way to put the logo like a decal almost over the green. So I'm going to press Control up arrow over the node editor, and let's take a look at this. What I want to do is bring in another diffuse shader to mix with this one. So this is already mixing here. What I'm going to want is another diffuse shader, so right here. And I want to mix that here, so I'll bring in another mix shader right there. And then I want to bring in that image texture so I'll press Shift A and bring in a texture image node right here. And what's going to happen is we're going to want to bring this into the color right here. So we're going to bring the logo into this color diffuse node. And then we're going to take the alpha channel and bring it over here to the factor of the mix node. And that will overlay the logo over the green. Now, when we bring this in, we're going to bring it in based on a UV map. So I do want to add 
an input node here, a texture coordinate node, so we can tell it that we're going to use this texture based on a UV map. But in addition, I think what I'd like to do is bring in a mapping node as well. And what that will do is that'll allow us to have control over um, things like scale and rotation of our image. So I'm going to bring the UV socket into the vector and the vector into the vector here of the image like that. Now I want to bring in that image of our logo. Here it is. And there we go. So now let's hit control up arrow. And there it is. You can see that we've got the Captain Quark logo already on already on the character. I'm going to turn this on here, the rendered viewport shading. And there we go. There we can see it in the render. Now we may need to move it a bit. And we can always do that by coming back to Photoshop and moving this back and forth a little bit. We can turn on the grid here and move it up or down as we need it. And we can also come over here and if we, and if we come back to Blender and select everything, we should be able to see it in our UV map here. So if I come in here and choose that image from this menu here. So I'll choose the Quark logo there. Now we should be able to see it right in our UV map. There it is. And we can get a sense of where it is and where it should go here within this UV island by looking at it here. Now we could adjust this UV island to to move the logo around, but I don't know that I'd recommend that here. I think once you get your UV map in place, you really need to keep it that way. You need to lock it. Because once you begin moving UV islands around, it can raise other issues on down the road. So the trick for this is to be sure and save your images out with an alpha channel so there isn't anything behind the image. And saving it out as a PNG is probably the best way to go since that carries the alpha channel in it as well. And then when you bring it into Blender, you can use that alpha channel here in the node editor right here. This is what's allowing the color of this diffuse channel to show through. So using this alpha in conjunction with another diffuse node is what allows it to be a decal and overlay the base color. So this is the process that we'll also use as we create the textures for the eyes. We'll find a nice image of a pupil and we'll lay that image down onto the UV map of the eye as well. Well, in the next video, let's look at creating some subsurface scattering for the skin texture or for the skin material of Captain Quark. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different Blender tools along the way and we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at Blender101.com, where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.